Okay, I'd like to build an array visualizer, which is just a fancy way of saying a bar graph, kind of. Anyway, I want to just have a, an array of numbers, and I want to be able to display that array of numbers um, by visualizing it with bars of different heights. So let's let's see what we can do. So I'm going to create a sandbox here. We're just going to use our basic static template right here. And we'll rename this. Nifty Hawking is pretty cool, but uh, let's rename this to Array Visualizer. I'll change my... Oh, okay, there we go. We'll change the title here. Array Visualizer. We'll change this H1. Get over there. All right, let's change the content. Give it a little title. We'll call it Array Visual... I should have copied and pasted. There we go, Array Visualizer. Um, we should make a style sheet. We don't do a ton of style, but we'll have a little bit. Style.css. Good, and maybe the first thing I'll do is just select that H1. Actually, let's just do the body and go text align center. So everything is centered. Save that, save that. We should have an array visualizer, beautiful. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to need a div, um, and that div will have an ID, uh, we'll just call it container. And this is going to store the, the bar graph, right, the different bars. Um, maybe we should give that div some style. Um, so ID container, like so, like so. And then what I could do with this container, let's just give it a border, first of all, one pixel solid and gray just to start off with. And we should see this line because there's no content to it. Let's give it a width of 800 pixels and a height of 600 pixels maybe, and then margin auto so that it's centered. And then we've got this. Maybe 800 by 600 is too big. Let's <laughs> let's go 600 by 400. Oops, 600 by 400. I like that height better. That width. That's pretty good. Okay. Um, and we need some JavaScript, of course. So down here we'll have our little load JavaScript section where we do a script tag. Call it main.js or script.js. Whatever you like. New file, main.js. And there's our JavaScript. We'll give this a little title, array visualizer. And now let's create a global variable. Um, let's, um, what do I want to call it? My data. Let my data be assigned an array. Okay, so we're going to create an array, right? We use these uh, square brackets to create an array. We can put values into that array. Um, and let's just do some numbers here. 400, 500, 250, 550, 100, 300. Beautiful. Okay, so that creates the array. Remember, this is position 0, position 1, position 2, position 3, position 4, position 5. Right? The length of the array is 6, so we always go from 0 up to the length of the array, but not including it. So 0 to 5. Okay, um, now I want to print out this data. Right? Okay, we'll go display data. And maybe I'll do, make, let's make a function for that. Let's... Uh, Make a function called draw data. Sure, or draw array. That sounds a little nicer, maybe. Draw array. What's in that array? And inside of here, let's just do this. Uh, I want to draw all of the elements, right? Remember, I can go my data at position zero. We'll get the first element. Um, but I want to print them all out. So I'm going to use that loop that you should get really familiar with for let i be zero. I kind of short for index. I is less than my data. That's the array dot length. Right? The length is six, so my last index is five. So I want I less than six. So it'll go to the very end, which is five. And then I plus plus. Because I start at zero, increase by one until I get to the end. Okay, and then now no matter what size my array is, this loop will always work because it's using the length. 
And let's just for now do a little uh, console.log my data at position i. Right, so to do zero and then one and then two and then three and then four and then five. And print out what's in that position. So if I do that, I can open, I'm gonna open this in a new window. I like that better. Uh, hit refresh, and nothing happens, of course not, because I put this code inside of a function, I need to actually call that function for it to do anything. So I'll use the name of the function, followed by parentheses to invoke the function. We'll save that, go back to here, hit refresh, and hey, there it is. Right, so it just loop through, printed each um, element in the array. Okay, instead of doing that, well, yeah, instead of printing to the console, I want the data to show up inside of this container. So I'm going to do that idea again where I'm going to have my, let's call it output string, is an empty string. And then in here, I'm just going to create a div, let's say. So I'm going to go output string plus equals. Right, so I'm gonna, it starts empty, but I'm going to add on to this output string. And what am I going to add on? Like I can minimize that now or even hide it because I've got it open here. Um, what I want to do now is add on to this, this uh, the current data from my array. right? So I'm going to take the string and I'm going to add on. I'm going to do that doc string again. That's that back tick to the left of the one. And we're just going to add a div slash div like so and inside of that div we're gonna put that dollar sign curly brackets and that allows me to insert an, an expression so in this case I'm gonna insert my data at position I okay so that's we'll add these divs with the numbers from the data array into that div and then once the loop is all done I can select uh, that container element, right, this div right here, and I can set the inner HTML of that container to be this output string. Okay, um, to do that, I usually like to have the HTML variables up here, um, and I'll call this my container element is assign, get element by ID container, like so. And then here I can just go container element dot inner HTML is assigned the output string. Okay, I really hope that works. It's, it's always funny. You write some code and you're like, okay, let's see what happens. It's actually a really cool part of a programming, right? You can test your programs, you can run it, and it either works or it doesn't. You've got to figure out why it doesn't. Okay, let's see what happens. So refresh, and yay! Okay, cool. So it added, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, it added the divs um, with all the different content from my array. And of course, now if I change these numbers, right, let's change that first one to 200. Let's add another one, um, 600. So when I refresh this, 200, we've added one, 600. So it's going to loop through all of those values and display them. Super cool. Okay. Um, let's just do a little bit. This is pretty good. I'm probably going to wrap this video up soon, but let's maybe just do a little bit of styling. Um, I can select container and then a space div. That will say select all of the divs that are children of the container. Right? So it kind of says this, this divs that are inside of container elements, or the ID container. And maybe I want to give this a background color of like orange. Maybe I want it to have a border. I'll do a little gray border again. Let's see what that looks like. So we can see kind of, yeah, it's these bars, right? Um, and you know, we'll do more because <laughs> we're, get, we're getting close here. And I think in the next video, we'll work on styling this. So it actually, we can take these, that, these numbers will become well, first of all, we need, if I want to do a bar graph, I want them to go vertical. So we're going to do some Flexbox stuff to change the style of these. And then I, the layout of these. And then I want these numbers to actually be the height. So, you know what, we'll work on that in the next video. This was good. We set up our HTML. We've got our uh, array created. We have a function that will 
draw whatever is um, in that array, right? Looping through it, traversing through it. That's that's pretty good. So we'll stop there, and in the next video, we'll work on making that bar graph. Okay, thanks a lot. Take care, and we'll see you next video.